Live on WFLA Now, this is Run for Fun with running enthusiast Lee Spann. All right, let's go. Welcome back to the Stream Center for this week's episode of Run for Fun. Of course, we designed this show to help you find how to really enjoy the sport. There's there's literally so much emphasis on running hard all the time, but that is a short-term plan. If you love the way running and walking makes you feel, it adds joy to your life, and that's the reason that you stay active and healthy for years to come. So I'm your host, meteorologist Lee Spann here at WFLA in Tampa. But I'm also an avid runner and now for about 14 years. And just like most people, I started out running and I would run as fast as I could every time I went out. And then I would do that for a while. Then I'd take these big breaks because I was like, okay, that's, you know, and then eventually come back to it. And it took me a while of doing that before I met a group of runners who showed me what it was like to just love and feel the joy of being out there and not just to run as fast as I can all the time. So the leader of that group, of course, Coach Maria. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How are you? Oh, I'm great. How are you? Do you have a nice tan you got going on there? Uh, yeah, it's a tan. I did. I should have followed our podcasting rules because <laughs> I I didn't wear enough sunscreen and I'm paying for it. But um, the weather is definitely heating up. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. The sun is getting. My clients are definitely overthinking that they might be getting out of shape because they can't run as fast because the dew point is increasing. So while I'm here, I will do a friendly reminder that you just have to slow down your easy runs. That's all. And are you saying it's your (laughs) your specific client who's sitting on this screen with you? (laughs) No, there's a lot of, no, you guys know, but I do have a lot of clients and a lot of notes in the last week that have been like, I think I'm training too hard. I think I'm not improving. And you just, I just have to remind everybody every year that this time of year is actually the most dangerous time to run. It's the easiest time to get dehydrated because we we don't have enough blood plasma yet. We haven't built up that blood plasma to get used to the higher dew points. Um, so drink extra electrolyte water and make sure you're slowing down until you adjust. And two, also this time of the year, the, the weather doesn't really allow you to get used to it. You have three or four yeah, days with high so dew points, and, and then you have you know beautiful, yeah. like this weekend, the Easter weekend, we're going to have dew points in the 40s. It's going to be wonderful, right? So yeah, then, then and people yeah, can't build up the it, blood plasma. Yeah, and people forget, like when the dew point is low in the 40s, but the temperature is high, you can still run pretty well. Mm-hmm. It's, it's when that dew point gets up in the 60s. Like if you have 70 temperature and 40 dew point, it's not that bad. Yeah. But if what, you have... 70 temperature and 69 dew point it's really bad so it's not just about the temperature yeah. you got to pay attention to that dew point yeah so especially this time of year that's a little psa from from yeah the leader of our group <laughs> a coach little coach's <laughs> drill before the coaches <laughs> right uh <laughs> so you know maria we often talk about the in um in this show it's we we're trying to create lifelong runners right mm-hmm. like we want we don't want you to burn out we want you to to enjoy it for years and years to come which means eventually you're going to get older. And that's sort of the yeah. the topic for today is you can't always run exactly the same as the decades go by. We want you to be able to run for decades. So this is what we're going to talk to about today is how to adjust that routine as we get older. Yeah. And, and how do you start? Like yeah. Cheryl's like the perfect example. And this is what I want to talk to Cheryl about um, how she started because she started later in life. And some people think, you know, I'm I'm older and I shouldn't start running now. It's too hard on my joints. It's too hard on my knees. Um, what made you start running, Cheryl? It was the strangest thing because I was in a group. We had a, a meet, big meeting at the beginning of the school year I teach. And one of the teachers said, I'd like to get a group together for a 5K, Gasparilla. And this was in August of 2012, and um, she said, who would like to do it? And I looked around, and a bunch of people were raising their hand, and I found myself, <laughs> and I was like, who is this raising her hand? It was me. And so she recommended a couch to 5K. And how long ago was this? Uh, this was in 2012. Okay. Because my first Gasparilla 5K was in uh, the 5K in 2013. And so... I started with that couch to 5K. She set up some running events uh, after classes, and I started. I had some people that I ran with. They said, week six and seven, you're going to want to quit. Don't quit. Keep going. So week six and seven, I wanted to quit, and I kept going. And I did like a run walk, and then um, I did my first 5K. And, oh, I started out of the gate as fast as I could go. And I was dashing around people and all the crowds. And 
I got done with the 5K, and I, I had all those ideas about you, you can't walk, you can't walk. Mm-hmm. But I got done, and I got that medal, and I could not stop smiling, and I wanted to do another one. And it's just been. Do, do you, you know, remember doing what a, your time was that first five? It was like thirty nine minutes, thirty, okay. almost forty minutes. And that's you know, and that's good. a very com, you know, there's a lot of people in that Gasparilla five k. Yeah, so I yeah. mean, it's it, you are dodging people for yeah. the entire. Oh, I was. Race. It was it was wild. <laughs> so uh, I've heard a thing that said before you did this, you would get winded walking upstairs. Is that yes, <laughs> my husband always kids he me does. that before I started running, I couldn't even go up a, sh- a flight of stairs without being short of breath. And there's some truth to that. Um, even since I moved to Florida, I was pretty sedentary. Um, I had gone on and off my whole life. I know I did aerobics for a while and I did like treadmill mm-hmm. walking for a while and I did stuff, but nothing ever would stick. I would do it for a year or two and then I would be sedentary for a while. And mm-hmm. I moved to Florida and I saw people out and about and I would even look at runners and like contempt prior to investigation think, <laughs> you know, why are they doing that? Yeah, yeah. Until I started and... I was hooked. I didn't know it. And I did not have any idea about the future in running that I've had. No idea at all. So can you, so, so we didn't get to introduce you. This is Cheryl Zabrowski and you are a nurse in at Tampa General. Uh, no, I teach at USF. So you teach at USF. Uh-huh. Okay, sorry. And then, um, so how old were you when you ran that 5k? If you don't mind me I was, asking. I was 56. Okay. So I just wanted to let people know that like you're starting at when most people think you maybe should be stopping exercise. And we want people to know that that's, that's yeah, not the case. I've had students tell not me true. that they, you know, oh, they don't, they don't run. And I always say, well, not yet. <laughs> I didn't start till I was in my fifties. You don't have to wait that long. And so it's just not too late to start. That's so exciting. I always love to hear stories like yeah, that. Yeah, it was. My mom has actually started to run a little bit. Oh, good for her. My mom is 71. She started to add a little bit of running into her walking. And she's like, I don't, I don't think I should be doing this. My hips hurt. I'm like, no, it's okay. It's okay to do this. <laughs> and doing something new, your body is going to have some, some adjusting mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, that it, it, and it will take a little bit more adjusting time if you're older. So you have to be a little bit more patient with yourself. And, and, Cheryl was patient. Look at this. So she went from a 5K to these are just two of your marathons I that you know. have run. So you said yeah. you didn't expect the the future. So, you know, where have you what, where has it taken you in these last couple of years? Well, I think about the second year I found a running group. And that's really where I started to learn what I could do because I had people that were my age or even younger, but they were so encouraging. They were like, Oh, a 10K, you can do that. Oh, you can do a half. Oh, you can do a full. And I, I, I mean, at each level, I was like, I can. And so the one on the left is my first marathon. It was a Chicago marathon in 2016. I could not stop smiling for days. And it was hard and my yeah. time, it took me a long time and I walked some of it. But to have that whatever that blanket thing is, the Mylar, um, blanket. The mylar blanket. And I had my very own Mylar blanket. <laughs> and um, the medal was the Picasso medal from Chicago. And I remember that from when I was a little kid. And um, it was wonderful. And um, I remember having dinner, I think I had dinner with Maria and a couple of, another couple afterwards. And I was so hungry. <laughs> and I wanted French fries and chicken tenders and all this other stuff. And um, but I smiled the whole meal. So and then, I mean, to be fair, Cheryl always smiles like even at traffic, <laughs> when it's like really hard. She will like come across like she'll be like, "That's the fastest I ever ran." And she's like smiling. This is so hard. Oh, it's so hard. Like, I yeah. never guess it, Cheryl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what what makes you love the hard? A a lot of it is that I can do it yeah. because I think when I first started in track, really taught me this is that like you can run hard and your heart rate goes up and it's going to be okay. And so there were times when um, I was running track with Maria and um, there would be times when my heart was going pretty hard and I was, you know, working hard and I was push pushing and she'd be like, you can do another one. And I was like, I can, but I did. And I just learned what my body could do. And mm-hmm. I had never really 
believed in it before. I was not a coordinated. I was not athletic at all. I was one of those kids like, please don't call on me. I don't want to, you know, and I was just like, don't hit the ball to me because I'm too afraid. I was not an athletic person at all. And so when I found out that I could run around a track as hard as I can and that there were different paces that I could run, it was really exciting. And, um, and I, I learned it because, because people had confidence in me. Yeah. And so, and yeah, I do smile at the end. <laughs> Did last night. And it they is making, scary. Yeah, I, I do like. It is I, scary when your heart rate gets high. That's mm-hmm. really scary for a mm-hmm. lot of people. Like they think I, I can't tell you how many times people are like, "Oh, my heart rate's just too high." I'm like, "Well, trust your body. Your body is going to shut you down much sooner than you're going to allow it to happen." So, like, you're you got to learn to try. Part of being good at track and being good at running is learning to trust your body and your body signals. Your body will tell you. And it and it does because I have gone out like too fast or whatever. And there's your, your heart pumping hard. And then there's like, okay, this is dumb. And, (laughs) and (laughs) I've been at both places, but I trust now when it's hard, it can, I can do hard things just as, Mm -hmm. as coach always says. So. And I do love the fact that running is a, is a way for kids who maybe did not used to, or, you know, did not grow up athletic. Oh, please. It is something that if only, if only, <laughs> no. if only someone had the confidence, maybe they, you would, maybe you would have done cross country or something, but yeah. it's just something that all those years you thought you weren't athletic oh, and absolutely. here you are racing 26.2 miles. I like know. what that little kid must think. <laughs> oh, I know. She's so excited. Good. She's so excited. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's Cheryl's pretty remarkable it too. Yeah. She's like, she's being really humble right now, but she, <laughs> doesn't go to a race where she doesn't win her age group for the most part anymore or get second or third in her age group. She's really, you know, she's improved so much as a runner. She, I mean, she runs a 28 minute 5k now, um, which is like 10 minutes off of where she was when she first started. Mm -hmm. And I tell her often when I'm looking at her data, sometimes I have to remind myself of her age because you do have to train differently when you're older. And Sometimes her data just looks like some of my 40 year olds. And I'm like, oh gosh, no, Cheryl's a lot older. I have, she needs a little bit more recovery. She probably shouldn't be running all those miles. Um, and you, you just have to, she just has to train a little smarter than some of my 40 year olds, but, um, yeah, you can still improve. You can still get stronger and you can still push yourself really hard when you're older. All right. So let's though, that will kind of take us to, um, what, do people need to do because especially folks who maybe did start running in their 20s or 30s and now all of a sudden now they're in their 50s they don't know anything else like they don't they i've been doing it this way for 20 years what do i need to be doing now so that i don't hurt myself basically i mean the cool part for cheryl is that since she didn't run when she was younger she doesn't have right a a lot of times if you were running in your 20s and 30s and you were hitting your prs you are going to slow down after menopause that does happen but when you start around menopause, <laughs> which is exactly you only right. have one yeah. to go. <laughs> so she hasn't like she's exceeded her expectations, which is kind of the neat part about mm-hmm. starting later. She's able to improve so much because you really have 10 to 15 years of improvement from when you start training. And so she has she's, you know, how long have you been running now, Cheryl? Uh gosh. Uh 12 11, 12 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is we, longer I've ever done training. anything. Yeah. And she's been formal training with me for about since 10. sixteen. So, yeah, yeah. So she is. Uh, she's really um, improving still and doing things that she never thought were possible. And she's also extremely coachable. I mean, she when I tell her to eat, she eats food. <laughs> when I tell her to sleep, she sleeps. When I tell her we need to take a rest day, we need to take a rest day. But Cheryl's superpower is really just. Uh, fitting running into her lifestyle to make her lifestyle more fun. Mm -hmm. She is, she says all the time, her quality of life is so good because of the running. And I can't, you know, I say that all the time. Like I want you guys to fit running into your lifestyle so that it adds to your life, not stresses you. Yeah. You saw, uh, there was a picture up a few minutes ago of a Gasparilla and I was with like seven other women and these are women, my friends, my friend Anne and Kim and Laurel and and uh, Mary Beth and all of these women that I have been running with and running for fun with. And uh, Saturdays we do our long runs together. Uh, I catch up on the week with them. 
um, it's a joy. And uh, we all met through a running club. We're different backgrounds, and yet we are all connected. And it has just made such for such a great quality of life overall for me. And I think it's really helped with work-life balance also, because previously I had really only identified myself through my job, through my work. And now it's I have a place that I love to work, things that I love to do, and I have this other life that's fantastic. My husband is extremely supportive of me running. He gets tickled about it, and yeah. uh, that makes it fun too. Yeah. And, and so, and what have you seen as as a nurse? Like your body, you know, have have you gotten you know better numbers on you know your tests and things like that? I mean, as a nurse, you would really be able to see the difference in your body. Yes, I think so, and I think I've held held things like my blood blood pressure. I have a family history of hypertension, and so I have high uh, high blood pressure medications. But I also have running, and so. I had a physician tell me one time that my cardiovascular risk, yeah, you've got high blood pressure, but you, for your age, you probably have the lowest overall risk factors of many people that are your age. And so um, I think it makes a big difference. I'm a little more conscious of my nutrition um, overall and making sure now that I have enough because I'm not in it to lose weight um, because I don't feel good um, if I am too then I feel I feel frail. And yeah. so I don't want to do that. And and I think I get stronger, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I still have work to do. I still need to add strength training. I've been kind of uh, weak about that, but I'm I'm running and I'm doing it. And it's great. And so, Maria, yeah. uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just had one more question. Do you do you notice a difference in like your daily activities at work? Like, do you feel like you have more energy? Do Absolutely. You feel like- Absolutely. Okay. And I think I have less, I think I've had depression in my life. I think it helps mood um, mm-hmm. overall. Um, like I got up and I ran this morning and I was a little bit anxious about this, you know, doing this podcast, <laughs> it's something new to me. But I went out and I went for an easy run, a recovery run this morning, and it was beautiful mm-hmm. and it just sets the tone for the day. Yeah, I think you've totally made it in life when you when you have something hard on your schedule and you're like, oh, I need to run so that I'm in mm-hmm. the right frame of yeah. mind mm-hmm. to do that. And yeah. I, I bet, made it. you know, younger you would have thought, well, if I ran in the morning, I'm not going to have any energy to work during the day. And you and you come to find out what well, you adds energy. Yes, Somehow you have more energy, yeah. even though it's contrary to the non runner belief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think I think that there's. I'm, this might sound corny, but I think there's some role modeling in it too. You know, still taking mm-hmm. care of myself at an older age because I'm one of the older faculty that students have, and so being able to take care of myself, I think, helps them um, overall. I never use the word when we're talking about older people. I never use the word elderly no. anymore. <laughs> yeah, <'cause, laughs> we have to actually be really careful about that in um, when we're writing new scripts. Oh yeah, because it's really easy for a 25 year old some writer to be like, oh, you know, an elderly person in a car accident. It's like, tell me how old that person was. They're in their 70s. They're not. They're not elderly. Yeah. Like, you know, mm-hmm. we're talking. Are we talking trip? You know, are they sent? Are they 100? Um, maybe you can start calling them yeah. elderly. But remember, there are some really strong 70 yeah. year olds out there. Yeah, absolutely. And so, Maria, absolutely. what I was going to ask is, so again, as people are move into this, you know. Is there something they should be doing to change out their running routine? Yeah, well, I think mostly listening to your body is really the most important. Cheryl really is good about keeping her easy runs really easy. Um, and that, you know, and it changes with the season. She, you know, some sometimes she can run a little faster when it's cooler and when it's, you know, hot, she, she makes it really fun and just slows down. Cheryl's also very good about her rest days. We, you really have to take a rest day. Um, she walks sometimes on her rest days and that's totally fine to take a walk, but she keeps her easy days really easy. Um, the other challenge that I see with some older people is that they tend to sometimes get on a rabbit hole down <laughs> nutrition craziness. I like to call it where they like, you know, are trying to lose weight and they get into like fasting and, as a runner, we have to be really careful of that stuff because when you're running, you're asking your body to do a lot more than the average person. So if you are going through menopause and you're not running and you're, you know, just walking, I can see 
why people would go to fasting, but if you're running, you really need to have a nice balanced diet where you're getting enough protein. You do need to eat more protein the older you get, and you do need to eat carbs to support the running. And if you're not doing that, you're really making your cortisol levels too high. And I think that's what some people don't understand is that it's not just that we want you to eat food. It is that your metabolic system is not going to work as well. We want you to, we want you to work at optimum levels. And people get so carried away because they say, well, my doctor says I'm fine. My doctor said that I should do low carb. My doctor said that I should cut my calories. And while doctors are very, very important, and I think we all need to go to the doctor, um, runners are such a small percentage of the population. They don't study us like they, they study the average person. And so sometimes we have to do our own research when it comes to that. Um, and it's just been proven in menopause science for women is that if you're a runner, you really still need to have a balanced diet. You need to eat carbohydrates and that fasting is just not good for you. Cheryl doesn't seem to go down those crazy rabbit holes. Yes. No. <laughs> this is why we have her on, we have her on <laughs> yeah, to talk no. about it. No, now, but like you that. did say what, uh, that she focuses in on recovery. And I think that, yeah. I think as, the, as, as all of us age, we think that we, we, we forget that we're getting older and we forget that we, our bones and our, our muscles need maybe even more recovery. Yeah. More recovery. And, and, you know, strength training is important. I know Cheryl doesn't love to do it, but it is important because as we get older, we lose our muscle and we Mm -hmm. lose our muscle from, we can lose it from running too, because we're asking a lot from our body. Cheryl loses less because she eats enough calories. She eats a significant amount of calories, which I've always appreciated about Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Um, But we do have, we don't want to be frail. She said it herself. Like, I don't feel good when I'm thin. And that's really important that we don't want to be frail as we age. We want to keep that muscle that we have because that keeps our metabolism running well. Mm -hmm. And if we fall, we aren't apt to, to, to get, you know, those hip breaks and stuff that are so dangerous as we get older. And do you, and Again, a misnomer I would like you to address. It, again, are the hips and the, the joints and the and the knees and all of that, you should want to keep moving though. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And mm-hmm. running, like we're built to run. Like we just are built to run. We were supposed to chase down our food back in the day. So mm-hmm. we're built to run as long as we're running safely and we're not being reckless about it. Um, I mean, Cheryl's Cheryl just had a marathon PR, like a huge marathon PR. So exciting, yeah. um, at, at Chicago, yeah. Chica- yeah, yeah so my s- six years later or seven years later in Chicago again, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, six years uh, older into yeah. your 60s? I was 60, just to, almost 67. Yeah. yeah. And then you're, doing, you're running faster than you were yeah. when you were yeah. in your 50s. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean... She's had very few injuries. She had a couple a few years back. We were probably Mm. training her a little bit harder than we should have, not taking, because again, sometimes I get carried away with Cheryl because she's just can Well, and I think I wasn't having enough vitamin D because I had a stress fracture um, just of my foot. And so I had to take some time off, but I also got my vitamin D drawn and it was a little bit low. So I added vitamin D and I think that's been helpful. Yep. And that's eating properly and and staying on your iron and your D and all that Mm -hmm. stuff. Since Cheryl's a nurse, she can like- be smart about that stuff she knows but um yeah we require a lot more as runners than the average person and our needs are more and so we have to be on top of that the cool part is now with all the science there's so much science around this now and menopause has been has been kind of brushed aside for many years um now it's coming to the forefront people are starting to do research on it and we have new things like inside tracker um they will they will do blood work specifically geared towards runners. So you you can even bypass the doctor and go get your blood work done and and do that. So I'm not saying do that, but if you if you're not sure what your levels should be, go ask somebody that does know what a runner's levels should be. So when a woman does go through menopause, I mean is that it is that when muscle starts decreasing? Like what are some of the things that makes it I, I, yes, I get the coach and the nurse. Yeah, yeah. What is, what physically is happening to your body? Well, I think one of the things that happens fairly early during menopause is the first number of years is you can have pr- quite a bit of bone loss and I have a history, mm-hmm. a family history of osteoporosis. Yeah. And so running is was one of the the things that had always been recommended. And so I started to, and it was, I went through menopause around the age of 56. And so 
started to, you know, add more weight-bearing exercises to help to decrease mm-hmm. some of the risk of bone loss. And I think that's been helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And we lose after age 40, we lose 10% mm-hmm. muscle a decade. So, I mean, that's if you're not strength training. If you are strength training, you can counteract that. But people are always like, I'm going through menopause, so my metabolism is slowing down, which is true, but your metabolism is slowing down because you're losing muscle. And when you lose muscle, your metabolism doesn't need to work as hard because fat doesn't burn as much. So we want to keep the muscle that we have. Um, That's really important. So that keeps our metabolism going strong and it keeps us able to eat a lot of food when we're older. I mean, Mm -hmm. who doesn't want to eat more food? (laughs) I I want, I want to eat more food. I like to eat more food. The, uh, and so why is it so important then for taking the rest and the recovery so even more seriously? Because it takes us longer mm-hmm. to adapt to what we're doing. Unfortunately, after, and actually master's is considered 35 to 50. Wow. Grandmasters is considered 50 plus. So 35 year old track athletes, they'll start to change their recovery strategy and how, you know, how much time they need sleep is extra important, how much like their easy runs will have to be easier if they want to run the same amount of miles and everybody's different. Um, so you can't put a blanket, you know, blanket on that. But I also, I have a lot of athletes that will start cross training more because they can, um, bike at a lower heart rate than they do running the older they get. Um, so there's lots of different strategies you can do to help you stay physically fit and still improve when you're getting older, but you do have to think about it a lot more than when you're in tw- in your twenties and thirties and can just go. And, and not doing it in your twenties and thirties, is that going to make it worse? Like, are you, are you, is there like a cumulative effect of not r- resting when you're I, younger? I mean, ad- anecdotally, probably okay. like if you talk to Bart about it, Bart Yasso, he'll be like, you just have a certain amount of years running. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe, um, I always feel like I've delayed it cause I didn't start till I was 19. Um, but then again, you have my old coach, Brenda, who she ran as a kid, ran junior high, high school, and she's, I think 65 now, and mm-hmm. she still is running marathons really yeah, well. Yeah. So, so much is individualized. So I don't want to put blanket statements on things, but really rest and recovery, making sure that you're eating enough, sleeping enough. Um, keeping your easy runs easy enough and having a rest day and, and you'll be fine. So a lot you of, just don't have to, you just have to worry about cortisol levels a little bit more than you do when you're younger. Yeah. That was about to say, cause a lot of this advice is we're giving to all runners is just, okay, now you really have to do it as you get older. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of like, okay, this is, you know, this is just pay more attention to the things that you should have been paying attention to, even mm-hmm. when it didn't bother you as much when you were 20. Yeah. Because the way we improve is we stress our bodies And then the recovery makes us stronger, right? If we're just continually stressing our bodies, we can't recover and get stronger. The fact that Cheryl keeps getting stronger means she's got the right balance. And that's what we need, the right balance. And so what about, what is it about track that gets you out there once a week? Uh, Well, there's a, a ton of camaraderie at track. And when we look at track, um, when I work with these, the, the people, we have a very, wide range of abilities. Mm -hmm. We have some really fast young people. We've got some slower people. And one of the things that I love about our track group is that we cheer each other on. And so it doesn't matter if you are a six minute mile person or a 14 minute mile person that they cheer for everyone. And that's a beautiful shot of track. (laughs) That is, and that is what track is like is there's all different people and everyone is encouraging everyone else. And we usually don't get the workout until right before we do it. So we warm up, then we get the workout and we're all like, oh no, we're not going to be able to do it. And then we all do it. And then they say three sets of whatever. And we're like, oh no, three sets. But by gosh, we do those three sets and or four sets, whatever it happens to be. Last mm-hmm. night's workout was tough. And we're like, oh, no. <laughs> That's why I gave it to Doug to do. <laughs> I, know, I know. And we did say that, you know, substitute teacher. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we all did it. And um, everybody was encouraging everybody else. And it's a, a really good environment to to learn uh 
to improve and just to recognize the things that your body can do that you never thought that they could do. And, it's, and we it, also try to keep it fun. It like is we very try to fun. Goof around. We try not to take ourselves too seriously because with track, you can take yourself too seriously. I I do believe that. And at the end of the day, we're all recreational runners. So, yeah. you know, we're not getting paid to do this. So we have to, in order to keep showing up, it has to be somewhat fun. Yeah. And, well, it, and it is. Well, and I think, you know, with I, because of my schedule, I've never been able to go, but I feel like it's such a contained environment. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're trying to do that all alone on a street, you might be it's easier to give up because you don't. Yeah. You know, oh, you're absolutely. Seeing, you're seeing the person right there, go like, I can go catch them or whatever. Whatever it is. No that, doubt. But uh, but if you're out there on a street running those same paces, you're more likely to be like, oh well, I can't do it. Stop my watch. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's, it's it's so there is a, a, a you could say peer pressure, but it's really peer support. Yeah. I think more than anything else, and. Um, like last night, one of uh, the, the people, he hasn't been here in a couple of weeks, Eric, our friend Eric hadn't been there in a couple of weeks and we saw him and we were like, yay, Eric's yeah. here. And so he was there. And so uh, we hold each other somewhat, not, I don't want to say accountable because that sounds like, you know, pressure, but it, it's just kind of like the joy mm -hmm. and the fun of learning this thing together, I think. And it's like we talked about last week, Lee, when we were talking about how when you feel missed, when you're not at something and somebody's missing you, that makes that makes you feel pretty special to know that you have a group that like genuinely wants to know where you are. And, mm -hmm. oh, they were racing this weekend. That's why they didn't come to track because I won't let people come to track the week after they race usually, um, especially on Monday night. But then they'll be like, well, I wonder how his race went. I wonder how things went. And it's just really nice to know that people around you are caring about what you're doing, mm -hmm. even if it's a hobby. And Cheryl, you found that, you know, in track, but also just in, in the running group that the, yes. the whole reason that you even started was because it was a group. And I right. feel like a lot of people um, will find more of the fun, more of the joy when you're around people. I think that 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 running group mentality when you, you know, because I didn't start out with a running group. Right. I started out by myself and it was just like, OK, this is this is fine. And there's no, you know, this is a way to exercise. I, I might stop so at some point, yeah. take these breaks. But when you, but when you have friends. That's when you get to go see them. So you end right. up showing up on a more often basis. Right. I started running and I was running, doing a lot of run walk, which was great for me at the time. But then I started running and I met my friend, Anne, and she was running and talking. And so I started to run and talk. And I was like, oh, I can run a mile because I didn't know that I could do that. Yeah. But then I learned how, you know, you just learn the things that you can do. And so... And gosh, we've been running together for many years and just, sorry, just never get. How many times do I hear that? Yeah. When somebody says, I don't know how you talk and run at the same time. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know how you don't talk. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Long, long runs <laughs> yeah. with friends I mean, are the best. The be it's the best. It's the best. So, yes, I think that, that is, that'll, that'll keep you young for sure. Yeah, you know, no matter yeah. how old you are, when you're chatting with yeah. your best friend, that's the thing that keeps you, you know, happy and joyful. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it doesn't matter what age you are. At that that's point. right. Because I was even running with some young people. And let's say they were in their 20s and 30s. And I was running with them and hearing about all their stories and what <laughs> oh, they were going God. through. And it was so much fun. It keeps me younger, too. So I yeah. have things on my playlist that I learned from my running group songs that I never would have heard before. And they're on my running list. now. So, so. Cheryl, I've got a question for you. Okay. If somebody is listening to this right now mm -hmm. and thinking, I really want to run, but I'm too old for this, what would you tell them? Oh, dear. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's okay. Start out slow. You're going to want to quit week six or seven. <laughs> I'm glad someone <laughs> told you that. Don't quit. Just keep going. Start out easy like a run walk. Don't think you have to run hard. It's Think of Think of jogging. Jogging yeah, is good. Yeah, that's what I love. I love that word. Jog. Yeah, jogging is good because it's a low pressure mm -hmm. uh, word, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's recreational. Like it's it, recreational. It's a word that's meant for recreational runner. So yeah. And at the end of the day, we're recreational runners. Now that doesn't mean we don't want to improve. We can still improve, but the jogging. I'm not is getting a sponsor. The I'm yeah. not going to. That's right. Not yet. I might sponsor. Not, not yet. Sponsor right. you, Cheryl. <laughs> well, Cheryl, thank you for being an inspiration to all of us because you are 
when you're well, out there, when we fun. see you, you. when we see you on the on the race course, the joy that you have is that is something to be to aspire well, thank to. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you. And thank yes. you for being the leader of the group, Maria. Oh, thanks for thanks for coming, Cheryl. We always appreciate you. And gosh, you inspire me so much. I just want to be running like you when I'm absolutely. I do. I've got more to do. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye.